Hello, race fans. Welcome to another episode of Short Track Guys Podcast, brought to you by ShortTrackExclusives.com. I'm your host, Thomas Battis, alongside two other short track guys in the studio, as always. Jim Pokrant, driver of the 07, can't quit fishing.com, sportsman at Five Flag Speedway, and 2021 sportsman champion here in Pensacola, Florida, and Ted Baber, Ted Baber Video Productions. All your video needs in the Southeast, especially here at Five Flag Speedway. Welcome back, guys. How's it going? Good to be back. Yeah, welcome back. And uh, we missed you last week, and um, uh, we've had a really, really good response from last episode. And um, uh, it's good to have everybody back in the studio. And we're going to kind of catch up on some of the stuff uh, with the Sportsman Update. You know, we got the July 1st Independence Day celebration here with the Outlaws, the Pro Truck, Sportsman, and Pure Stocks coming up. Jim, you're fourth in points now. Uh, we missed you last week. We were busting knuckles in the shop, getting that car ready. Uh, he's 36 points behind the double zero and Brendan Fowler. Uh, get us up to speed on what's going on in that stable. Well, first, let me say you guys did a great job last week. In my absence, I was really proud of you guys. Awesome job. Um, well, we, of course, the last race we blew a motor. So, um, now we have a fresh engine, fresh carburetor. Um, and I did some chassis adjustments. I won't say what I did. Just so nobody knows, but a couple little things different. We're going to try it. I, I talked to my setup guru, a gentleman by the name of John Ruth, which I sure do appreciate all his help. And uh, he tried me to try something. So we're going to try it and see what happens. Um, I would love to win that championship. 36 points isn't insurmountable. It can happen. I made up 25 points in one night. So it can happen. So we're not giving up yet, but you know, it's going to be tough. But I uh, got to thank my. My good friend Ben Cranford, driver of the 343 Pure Stock for the loan of the motor and the carburetor. Um, without him, I wouldn't be out there. And there were several teams that were saying that I wouldn't make it. And now their bubble is bursted because the 07 is going to come off the trailer and it's going to be faster. So uh, we're going to be ready to uh, open up a can of proverbial whoop behind and uh, pour it all over them, I hope. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. We're going to enjoy it. Uh, got to thank um, my sponsors, especially All Pools. Uh, Rich Bonneberger, thank you so much for the mo- tires this week, and James Pfeiffer for help with tires and fuel, and uh, Emerald Coast for modeling and trim. Thank you, J- uh, Mike. I appreciate all you do for me. Ted Baber, yep. my good friend, helps me out. And uh, uh, like I said, Ben Cranford, dude, I-, I couldn't do it without you, and thank you so much for your help. Yeah, and those are, I mean, by the way, just for everybody to know, those are plug sponsors. So if anybody out there that's heard their name and, and, and has some repercussions from what we're doing, we do appreciate some reciprocation, uh, and some support. And right. we do always appreciate that. And those of you that have already to keep that going and, uh, it keeps us alive and keeps us motivated. Um, Jim, tell us a little bit about what you've learned from the production videos that uh, Ted's put together uh, as to how you're able to, to adjust your driving style, if that plays into a matter. Well, it does help a lot, and especially like the end car, because I have him put it towards my hands where I can see my hands and then see out the car so I can see what the car's doing as well as what I'm doing inside the car. And it usually pertains to how I felt what was going on, but it's a big help. And the external thing is you can watch different race car drivers learn different things. Like uh, if someone's dive bombing you, how to back up the corner, or if you're, this guy's behind you, should I drive in a little deeper? How should I att- attempt to pass this person? It all helps a lot. It really does. And it's, it's fun to watch. As, as a matter of fact, uh, me and Tina were watching a, a video of her, her racing against me in 2008. She beat me in the race before, and then the next Ted Baber video, she stuffs me in the wall. <laughs> so it was pretty it was pretty cool to watch those races because you're just like, wow, I forgot all about that, you know, and then uh, she stuffed me slap in the fence. Now, one thing I've noticed on, on some of those, if you, you can watch how people uh, approach the start. Some folks will are very consistent about where they do the start at, and, and if you don't mix that up a little bit, or if you do it constantly, you can kind of anticipate exactly when they're going to hit the gas. And well, the mix it up thing, I don't like brake checkers. I don't do that. I'm when we the pace car drops off, I'm keeping up the pace. When I get in that box, I'm dropping the hammer and we going racing. Yeah, I think that, there were. I think that wreck you're talking about, there was somebody that hit you after that. Oh yeah, <laughs> matter of fact, there was a gentleman by the name of Thomas Fattis who plowed it. Not bad enough. The front of the car goes in the fence. I spin around. Thomas just knocks the whole ass end of the car over about. <laughs> 12 inches oh well he just you know he finished it off but you know what he got to finish the race because we i remember we got out of the car while they were towing my car in my crew ran over and got his car fixed so he could finish yeah, <laughs> yeah i remember that damn sure was i've seen yeah. the, i saw the video it's pretty funny to see because you're just like 
she just drives in there, puts her bumper in, in my bumper and never lifts. And the funny <laughs> thing is we're dating now, which is crazy. But um Yeah, that's yeah. not the only time we've had a run in, but I mean we've known each other yeah. for fifteen years. So I mean, you know it's happened just a few run ins, you know, that's pretty good odds. Yeah, well, it happened twice. The yeah. second time it totaled both cars. That was urf. <laughs> That was, up. <laughs> that was in the I was in the Big O's mobile that night with Tina, and then when I went to drive in that little Buick was when you and I slammed into one another and ended both cars. Just had to dig a hole and bury both of them because they were all killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, I remember that vividly. Uh, you know, those are good times. And July 1st, Independence Day celebration with the Outlaws Pro Truck Sportsman at Pure Stock. Uh, Jim, 36 points behind. You say insurmountable. I believe it's, uh, it can be made up and you, you can go after it. And I hope, I hope these changes that you've made make a difference and then, uh, you can turn this season around. Well, I mean, we're looking at hundreds of a second. The last race we ran before we blew up, we were like um, three one hundred slower than the guy who won the race, which is a little bit, but not a lot. No. Make that up and, you know, we can go buy them. It, it's, I'm not trying to cry here and I'm not trying to fuss, but there's some motor situations that I know ain't right. And I, no. I know pretty much what they're doing. I just can't afford to do it. But the motor I got now is the best legal one in the bunch. And uh, thank you to, uh, like I said, Ben Cranford for the loan. I mean, I wasn't even out of the car if the motor blew up and Ben was standing at the day to blow up. Yep, we'll put my motor in here. Are you sure? Yep. He ordered a brand new Vanderly carburetor we stuck on there. So... <laughs> Should be fun. Yeah, we're just going to drop the big the big hammer down and let her eat. Let the rough side drag, as old DW says. Yeah, well, that's going to be that's going to be Friday night. So uh, next Wednesday we'll get the whole uh, kit and caboodle scoop on that You're and welcome. the results for everything that went on on Friday night in Pensacola, Florida, at yes. Five Flag Speedway. And we're going to get into a little bit more of an SRX thing that happened two weeks ago. Uh, we did last week's episode on the S SRX and we really want to keep this an episode going uh, forward through that whole season because it just, um, it be, being our first race, uh, well, their first race in the SRX series being here in our backyard, we want to keep that going because there's a lot of good stuff coming out of that. Uh, mm -hmm. a lot of local stuff, uh, a lot of things that people can relate to that are going to the other tracks like South Boston and Stafford and, and Nashville and the future here. Um, with some of the superstars, but I want to go back from last week and we talking about, uh, the dirt cup and we talked about, you know, venturing out right. uh, of different States and different areas, crossing the border. I mean, going 3,500, 3,600 miles away from our location. And we're talking about the dirt cup, the 50th annual Jim Raper dirt cup at Skagit. And I apologize for saying Skagit last week, but it is Skagit Speedway in Burlington, Washington. And I'm telling you what. Mr. Sunshine, Tyler Courtney, <laughs> which I had mentioned last week was the points leader right. of the three that I'd mentioned, comes away with $76,000 on a dirt track in Burlington, Washington. And if you haven't seen that video, please check it out from Skagit Speedway. I'm telling you, we'll, uh, we'll not disappoint. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, Tyler Courtney and Kerry Madsen, the madman, um, and then Dominic Celsi, uh, Shane Golick, and Jason Sobold. Uh, was seventy six thousand dollars. It was fifty thousand dollars to win, but there was an extra fifty thousand dollars in lap money, and Tyler Courtney ended up winning twenty six of those. So that was a seventy six thousand dollar payout in Burlington, Washington. And that track is just a, it's just a. We talked about it last week and right. about it, yeah. how they developed it back in the early fifties, yeah. and and how it's become what it is. And it, um, we want to bring that to the forefront. We're going to follow that up with another dirt track race um that had some like big names in it up at Husserts High Bank Nationals uh with the World of Outlaws it's a three eighth mile in Brandon, South Dakota. Uh Sheldon Halsenshield um with James McFadden, uh Michael Kofoid, which is also known as Buddy Kofoid, and David Gravel and Carson Mikado. If you haven't seen the last Oh, five laps. <laughs> what a hundred thousand dollars you, you're missing. Where in the world did he come from? I mean, he 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 just gets fifth place with I think it was two laps to go. It was four also. laps. It was four laps to go when he got to fifth, and then he drove up and drove around. The thing that amazed me though is those guys pinching the cars down on the bottom, blocking each other. They forgot all about that high side hustle. Yep. He stuck that right rear in the cushion, and said, "Oh, well, look at this!" Smoked them. <laughs> Literally smoked them. Smoked them. <laughs> so what would it a, would it be? Sheldon High Side Hot and Shield. Yeah, Hot and Shield. I, I, I would go think with that. so. Yeah, we'll okay. Go with that. Well, all right, Sheldon, yeah. there's 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 our nickname for yeah. you. High, High Side. side. That there was that was a beautiful finish. I mean, dude, they're down there battling, all of a sudden it's like 
Hello. What? 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 Uh, How did, 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 did he just win the race? Yeah, you yeah, finished yeah, second, yeah, well, genius. Yes, you should have you should have freed the car up off the corner instead of blocking him. You should have been paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> probably <laughs> waving to him on his way by. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> got, got, the, got it cocked sideways, one hand on the wheel, going. Yep. See ya. Yeah, and just I mean, <laughs> just to throw some notables out there: Giovanni Celsi, Donnie Schatz, Casey Kane, and Rico Abreu. I mean, those are some of the biggest hot shots in sprint yep. car racing. And these are four ten sprints on a dirt track. Um, they've got those big wide back tire. Well, the right rear, I think, is a lot wider than yep. the track sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, some of the names that were in that race, and I think they went 24, 25 deep. And uh, those guys finished in the back with, I mean, wow. I, I just, I'm blown away with that. Right. Yeah, if you can see a replay of that, you you see some pretty awesome. I mean, that dude just smoked around the outside. Cause everybody was staying on the bottom. He's like... Let's see if this works. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, and I have to get a shout out to the commentating too, because the commentating and the picture in picture had the eye on uh, Sheldon and the 17 sprint car right. uh, coming up on the leaders and, and, and looking at those last four or five laps, the leaders just kind of battling back and forth and had no idea it was coming. Mm-hmm. And there was a buzz behind them and they didn't know it. <laughs> Yeah, both saw. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like the Jaws theme coming up. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> hey, doesn't the cup driver own that 17 car? I think that would be Ricky Stenhouse. That's right. I it is it. the NOS Energy car. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool because, I mean, you know, there's a lot of cup guys that own because I mean, he was just talking about uh, several of them. Right. That's pretty neat, man. And if that guy passes many cars in Howland Shield. I mean, he comes from a pedigree. Yeah, he, he just rocketed past them all. I know they were. <laughs> It had to be going, uh, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. Like, what, how did we lose that race? We were, we were straight away ahead. Yeah. Well, you were screwing around on the bottom and mm. how she went clear oh, high, clear high. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people don't understand. And you know, when they watch these races, uh, maybe they go to their weekend show on Friday, Saturday night, they've got their scanners on, they get the frequency, they can listen to the spotter and driver, whatever. But, you know, and then on the weekends with the cup teams and all that bigger stuff, but right. these sprint cars don't have radios. No. So these drivers didn't know what was going on. They're, they're focusing on what's going on around them, but they're on the these two, the these didn't know, these two didn't know that Sheldon was coming on and just like, he was pushing the cushion all the way out. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I can imagine it's like that jaw dropping thing. Like, Oh <laughs> yeah. What happened? He just wait, went wait, right wait, by us. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations to both of those winners with $76,000 to Tyler Courtney, Mr. Sunshine, and Sheldon Heldenshield with $100,000. You know, (laughs) these dirt tracks uh, all over the country, and like we talked about last week, uh, they're paying out some big, big Mm -hmm. money. Well, (laughs) here's my opinion on that, and, and I can figure out why they're doing this. There's no, there is some cup teams owning some of these dirt cars, but they're not cup affiliated. Right. That's what's ruining asphalt super late model racing is cup affiliation, just like what it's ruining, ruining the ARCA series. Everybody has to be affiliated with a cup team if you want to win. Right. You got to have that cup money. Same thing's going into late models. And that's why it's hurting asphalt and asphalt can't afford to pay because the pay doesn't mean anything to those guys racing. Because they're all cup guys, so the, the the money's already there, paid for them to race. They're not getting, they're not doing it for the money. So that's what hurts at dirt racing. They're doing it for the money, so therefore they can they'll pay it because the the tracks use the money to attract teams. Now with super late models and things like that, with being cup affiliated, they don't have to attract them because there's already cars there, and these kids are paying to go race. That's just my opinion, but that's what I see. That's why I think asphalt racing is suffering so bad. And why dirt racing is blooming. Well, the action on dirt tracks is pretty darn exciting, too. Just look, uh, we saw a shot of the uh, stands at one of those tracks, and they were huge. <laughs> they So they're attracting huge crowds. And that doesn't hurt either. I mean, you, you've got a good crowd. Well, I, mean, I think it was Skagit that we were looking at with the grandstands down the front straight out of four down to one. It, it looked like it was, it would, could, well, we told them last week they would host 10,000 plus. Right, yeah. So and, there and, you have it. But but and you've got Eldora, you've got Knoxville, you got these big dirt tracks. But like I said, there's no cup money going to those tracks. So therefore they can get sponsors and put on the big races and everything like that works good. Yeah. So, you know, you, you got the asphalts 
like like Donnie Wilson, he has six or seven cars that he's paid for by cup teams by other money, so he doesn't worry about the payout. So the payout then the, the tracks don't pay out because they're not worried about having to pay because the money's already there. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. these guys these guys aren't racing for the purse because the purse doesn't mean anything. Right. Right. It's all you know, prestige and, you know, notoriety. Yeah. I mean, and, how much money do you spend to win a snowball derby? A lot. A snowball derby should pay 100000 to win. It does. Well, yeah, I can understand that. It's all relative. Say you're running a, a, a pure stock out there and it costs you $250. Well, let's just go round it off. $200. That's pit pass, that's tires, that's fuel, blah, blah, blah. The car gets in $200 and you win 250 to win the race. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm saying if you're going to uh, put a parallel to it, uh, look at the series you're talking about. How much does it cost to run the Snowball Derby and win it? Way more than it, yeah. way more than, more made, than yeah. it pays. Right. But in the long run, like Christian Eckes, oh. like Eric, <laughs> Eric Jones, Jones. <laughs> um, like some of these other guys that right. we've seen pass on and get to the big leagues, how much does it really pay? Well, yeah, I, it doesn't pay enough. See, oh, yeah. but like I said, those teams are cup affiliated. You got guys coming down here. They got cup teams. That Eric Jones playing. wasn't cup affiliated when he beat Kyle no, Busch. No, you're right, but that day. doesn't happen anymore. If you notice, that doesn't happen anymore. It's all the big corporate teams. You got Donnie Wilson. You got a lot of these these big cup teams that are affiliated with these sh- local short track teams, and it's not on dirt. And that's why the dirt guys can, have to have the purse to attract you to come race. You think they have more respect than the asphalt guys? I don't think it's anything to do with respect. I think it just has to do with the fact that. The, there's no cup team going to the dirt track races going here. We're going to put $80,000 in your sprint car to, to get you on a sprint car to come run cup. They do it for asphalt because where's cup cup is on asphalt. So they're spending the The cup teams are spending the money on the asphalt teams and the purse means nothing because they've already, they've already, everything's paid for un, except for the local guys. And, but when it comes to dirt racing, they, they have to incentivize people to come. So they pay the big money to get to get the cars there. There, there's just more uh, guys that aren't going to go f- up any further that are racing dirt than race asphalt. Do you see where I'm getting at? Yeah, I, I think behind the scenes, though, it's there's there's sponsorships that's paying for a lot of that stuff. Well, and yeah. a lot of it is what we just was talking about, these two big dirt races here, right. the sprint cars with NOS. I mean, NOS Energy? No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did. I mean, they've but, got but, but, cars all throughout every facet of racing. You're right. But but NOS, NOS Energy pays for this, pays for that. And he's, when you have these big dirt races, you can go in there and say, look, we'll have the World of Outlaws come in, but we need 100000 to win. Okay. And they get a sponsor that pays for it. And right now, Cup is losing sponsors left and right. Well, where are all these, where's all this money going? Because they've got, they've got to get rid of it. They got, right. they got to pay, you know, pay tax on it if they don't get rid of it. So now they're, they're doing a lot more short track racing and a lot of it's on dirt. Look at a lot of the big names that are on dirt sprint cars and, and dirt late models right now. Well, and there's a lot of money floating around in those races, too. And that's why you're getting some of the bigger names from other areas of racing to you're come right. in. And in at least like the Eldora Million that we just talked about with yeah. Jonathan Davenport taking home that money. Right. There was a lot. I mean, Chase Briscoe, yeah. for instance. Oh, yeah. Well, he came but, from the other side and jumped the fence and said, I want part of that backyard. <laughs> Give me a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. but, but, but like I said. The dirt cars, uh, the dirt racing, the sponsors are figuring out that it's cheaper to sponsor a dirt car than to sponsor a cup car. And it's much right more exciting tanks. racing to me, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's good asphalt racing too, but you well, know, yeah. like I said, you've got maybe five late model teams that show up that really have a legitimate shot at winning the race and everybody else is running for fifth or sixth. Mm-hmm. And it's all a cup money. Well, it's, it's cup money is ruining everything. That's the, that's like the Arca series. Arca's completely ruined now that NASCAR took it over. It's a trickle down effect, unfortunately, from the top down. And I hate, I, I don't like to see big money coming in and just killing everything. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's the it way happens. it's going. Yeah. Well, and you have it, to pay the bills. It happens, and we're gonna probably step out of that pond and drop back into that Southern Super Series. Well, why don't we? Do that? Why don't we do that? And Ted's got that whole lineup and all this past weekend. Step it up and uh, uh, where, I, where was it? Tri County Speedway. Yeah, Tri County. And I just got to say, Hunter <laughs> Robbins, man, is that guy on a roll? I mean, he's just had recently in his prolate career, he's had wins at the Alabama Two Hundred to show me the money in, in Montgomery and Alan Turner uh, Pro Series here at Five Flags. And he's had a little bit of Hard luck at the Super Series until last weekend. <laughs> and he uh, had a huge win. Uh, it just, I, I'm glad to see him finally getting out there where he can you know, get things taken care of and have some a little bit better luck. Uh, 
I think we've got one of our heroes that used to run more with Ronnie Sanders in that 18 card briefly uh, yep. and had some success with that. And I think he had the pit boxes on the quarter panels mm-hmm. uh, yeah, with the 18 guy. car here yeah. for maybe a season or two. <laughs> yeah, I think um, he drove for like two seasons. And then they, they from, yep. from what I heard through the grapevine, that Bubba was coming up with these bad boy setups and they were winning races. And uh, Ronnie Sanders started selling the setups and Bubba got pissed. That's a true story. I heard that I come out of Bubba Pollard's mouth. I heard him talking one night at the at the Snowball Derby, and that's one of the reasons why he quit. He said, "I'm putting all this work in making these cars fast, and you're selling the setups to other people. That's not right." But I mean, he's Ronnie Sanders. He owns the car, yeah, so that's I mean, why Bubba went back to his own equipment. So that's do. that's a, that's a you know real deal. But congratulations to Hunter Robbins, dude. He has come on strong. He's always been good. Yeah. I mean, he's married to Snowball Derby winner Johanna Long. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't hurt. No, no, it doesn't. No, no. and yeah, I'm sure I'm sure some of that family money helps out. They're all living in Pensacola, so basically he's he's from Pensacola, Florida, right now. Yeah. So that's cool. I'm I'm glad to see it. I just hate that Bubba's having such bad luck. He's, yeah, he had a uncharacteristic finish in that, that that's race. That's two in a row. He had this one, and then Montgomery finished terrible. So, no. well, I can I can attest the talent between Hunter Robbins and myself because the paint scheme from my original um, sportsman car. <laughs> which was then spectator car came from a Ronnie Sanders super late model at one of the blizzard races before I got started. Oh, really? And instead of red and the divider and white, it was blue, the divider and white. <laughs> and that's because of the 18 car. Ronnie Sanders was in that car. And that's where that, my inspiration for that paint scheme came from. So to see the drivers that have gone through that stable, uh, is just, I mean, it's awesome because now you got Hunter Robbins in that equipment, which has always been good equipment. Yes, it has. Ronnie Sanders has gone way back in winning races. So, uh, kudos to that whole team. And I'm uh, congrats to you guys. Good job. That was, that was good to see. And he's won several races this year and he's been tough. So, yep. you know, he's, he's a contender for that championship. He's second in points now. Nassie better start stepping it up or he's going to, he's going to have him all over him here shortly. Mm, yeah. Yeah, what about uh, anybody else in that field that we would... Uh, quite a few. Uh, second place, Jackson Boone. And it was Jake Garcia, Carson Quapel, William Sawalich, Jet Nolan, and Stephen Nassie was seventh. And uh, and Jake Finch, Cody Connor, Michael Hind, Justin Kreider, Michael Falk, Dusty Williams, and then the uncharacteristic 14th place finish for Bubba Pollard, Lee Tissett, Tyler Church, and <laughs> even more. I, I don't know what the, his situation was. Matt Craig... 17th pulling shotgun. I tell you what, though, the finish of that race was exciting. Yep, it was. Because I'm going to tell you something. I will give Jackson Boone the, the oh, benefit gosh. of not putting the boot to that 18 car because he could have drove in there and moved him. He drove him clean. Right. I'll give him that. Now, the next time that happens, it may not come out that way, mm-hmm. but it was a good race. I, I really, I, It was a great finish, and, and Hunter earned that race. Well, the, the championship uh, points has tightened up quite a bit over that that race because of the way things finished up. Uh, it was just uh, Nassi now leads Robbins by 18 points. Pollard's 22 points back because of that, like I said, uncharacteristic finish. And Jake Garcia, he's 71 points back, but they say he does have an outside shot at pulling it off, which it's going to be a miracle, but it, well, anything can happen. He got it last year. Yep. I mean, that kid can wheel a race car. He's somebody that's going to be somebody we're going to deal with one day, so... Yeah. You know, Hunter Robbins wins the race, and Jackson Boone gave him all he could handle. Yes, he that. did. <laughs> I mean, he was underneath him, and he could have just very easily a little tap, a little bump, and just knocked him out of the wind, going on to win it. But he, he ran. Or, you know the old proverb, eight tires stick better than four. <laughs> That's uh, right. Hey, yeah. I won the race. You didn't. But he had respect, and I'll give Jackson Boone a, a big thumbs up for the respect he gave Hunter Robbins. And, and that third place finish from Jake Garcia helped him close the gap in the points but not there yet but we're going to be pulling for him like i said that that 35 car is always tough to to be uh somebody that can be right there at the end we'll yep. see yep that young man's a heck of a wheel man for sure yes, well all those uh you were talking about the the super series you know the southern super series the grand national super series the right. spears tour the arca midwest i mean all these super latest models all over the country are putting on such a great show for a lot of money and i understand where all these guys are traveling and yeah. It's it's exciting to talk about this from week to week going who's going where, who's doing what, who's coming off of what tour going and doing. 
It's so more than it, you can put in one in one show. Yeah, <laughs> it's all there is to it. Yeah, that'd be that'd be an ultimate all star race there. Yeah, you know they're they're combining some cars tour and the Southern Super Series races. Wouldn't that be cool if they got all the big late model series together and had like a four race shootout? Oh wow! <laughs> oh, like the dirt cars do. Right. You yeah. know, like um, uh, with the Knoxville Nationals or uh, the the indoor dirt stuff, they come in here and they run a whole week and go through mains just to get to the finals to win all the big money. But so, yeah, that'd I, be cool. But, but I would do it at four different racetracks. Oh. You know, do do a four champion. Like the uh, they used to do the Hooters Pro Cup. used to do the four champions challenge series. Yeah. You know, that would, that would be pretty cool, I think. But. Oh, anyway, the, the ultimate <laughs> super late model driver. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that show who the king of late super late models is, which we all know. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we know who we, we, we already know for. who the man is. It's Bubba <laughs> yeah. Pollard, but yeah, that's yeah. beside the point. No, Bubba. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you fans out there and your listeners can can go to Short Track Guys Podcast on Facebook right. uh, or leave a comment and uh, give us your thoughts and, and let us feed off of you and then we maybe can throw some more out because uh, it's a little different aspect of some talent. Some contracts or whatever Always in to racing, the listeners, <laughs> and uh, give some more information out there. But uh, we're going to end it with a couple of shout outs of the week. Uh, one of them happens to be the past All Star Series up at Seekonk, and that was in Massachusetts. And we give a shout out to a, a oh. race winner, yep. Johnny Clark. I've heard of this guy. Yeah, I, I've, I've <laughs> seen him race before. He's pretty good. He's come to Snowball Derby and run down there. He's, yeah. he's he's pretty tough. He's won a lot of big races up there. Yeah, a lot of those guys come from Maine and. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Michigan, Ohio. A lot of those guys coming in because that's how big this race is down here. And we're glad to see him doing well. And we talked about Jeremy Mayfield last week, right. you know, sweeping the weekend at Franklin County, I Franklin, think it was. Yes, it was. And was cool. um, it's good to see these names. Good to talk about them. It's exciting for us. Um, the next shout out of the week goes to Joseph Joyner. Uh, just 30 minutes from us uh, with Hunt the Front, um, you know, for his track record setting qualifying lap at 12.765 in the Southern All Stars Dirt Series. Uh, his fourth career, he's won three in Milton at Southern Raceway, and this is his first out of town in Clanton yeah. at Buckshot Speedway. And that was a rough track, too. And he, I don't know how he, how he managed to keep it under him, but he did, and he had it wound up. He's a heck of a wheel, man. He's he's a local guy. We got to have a little bit of pride in our local guys going other places and winning races. So yes. congratulations, guys. Keep up the good work. He made a poem. Yeah, well, great job, guys. Hunt the front and Joseph Joyner right here in Milton, Florida, going on uh, diving into some of these big races and being successful. It's always uh, fun to to watch and keep up with that. And kudos to you guys and your team. Keep going, and we look forward to that. Um, I want to give a little final shout out to uh, a guest we had on uh, episodes ago in our first season. Uh, she's the operator at Mobile International Speedway, Gina Knowles. Uh, we had her kindly on uh, as a guest. Uh, we're going to follow up with her shortly here in just a few weeks uh, or within. Uh, we want to give a shout out to what they had this past weekend. Their season's underway. They had a little bit of a delay uh, to get started. Uh, but they have been underway, and they had their event this past weekend on Saturday night, and I believe Jim happened to be there and uh, caught some of that action visually. Yeah, it was. It was the racing was pretty good. The truck series race was really good. Uh, shout out to my buddy Ben finishing fourth his first time in Mobile um, on these new American racers. Just something new. We decided to go over and try and play, and we finished. We didn't tear anything up, so it was a, it was definitely a good deal. Um, the uh like i said the racing was pretty good uh, if i had to say anything not really negative but there was only some of the classes only had like three or four cars we got to work on that but if there's three cars showing up every week you got to kind of tell them look guys i can't run you every week but i mean it was a good show other than that and i have to say this their concession stand food is really good all in all it was a good night of racing they had a decent crowd the pits were pretty full of cars and you know like i said it was a good show and I enjoyed it and uh, just got to hang out with my buddy Ben and uh, got to thank Mike Gorham for showing up over there, giving us a hand. And um, one of his crew members came over and uh, it was a good time. We enjoyed it and I uh, look forward to going over there again sometime soon. Yeah. And we also look forward to having Gina back on here in a, in just a matter of time. I've, I've reached out and we've made connections and uh, she was on uh, earlier. Uh, we enjoyed it and uh, we're going to give her some plugs and, and some love and try to pull fire flags in the Southeast in here, Mobile. And as well as maybe Houston Motorsports Park, which she's affiliated with also, maybe you could pull all that in there and make something happen here in the future. But uh, we look forward to having her back on in, in a short period of time. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, uh, another successful episode, and it's always great to be in the studio with you in close quarters talking short track racing, as what we do every week. Uh, try to, at least every week, and um, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, look forward to SRX uh, this weekend at Stafford. Uh, mm-hmm. we got Justin Marks, Matt Hirschman, and Haley Deegan in the lineup. Uh, it's going to be another stellar episode uh, next week when we go to Stafford. And follow up with uh, South Boston and then Five Flag Speedway here with who, the first who's, event. Who's Tony Stewart going to grab this time? I'm just, I'm just checking. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Just to give a shameless plug to the Dale Jr. download, Justin Marks was on there this week. You would need to listen to that guy. He's really impressive. And to start a cup team like he has and to already be winning races, just you need to listen to how he talks about his business model and things like that. Very intelligent guy. He's with uh, Track House Racing, correct? He owns Track House Racing. Right, he, he, okay. He is Track House Racing. Right, okay. he didn't. He didn't want to call it Justin Marks. He said, I didn't want to put my name in. I wanted something to build a legacy. And uh, doing a great job, by the way. So I just thought I would throw that in there. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Great news, man. I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, what, what there's, is there? there's just one more thing we have to do. I have to do it. In a one, yep. two, three fashion. Yep. And we sign off. And first of all, we're going to thank you again for listening and yes. being a fan of Short Track Guys podcast here on Facebook and all the platforms out there. Shoot us a message. And let us know what you think. Let us get better because of you. We That's appreciate it. it. Thank you, one, everybody. One, two, three. Let's, Let's go, go Brandon. Brandon. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week.